there's no doubt the British royal family is rich. And if you were to add up all of the land, properties and castles linked to the monarchy, you'd end up with assets of around £26 billion. Not to mention the Fabergé eggs, the crown jewels, drawings by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, and one of the most valuable stamp collections in the world. To some, the Windsors are an out-of-date money pit that should be consigned to the history books. It is a grubby and secretive and corrupt institution. While to others, they are the very best of British, combining history with majesty and bringing in billions to the country through tourism and business. Harry and Meghan's exit from the family known as The Firm has undoubtedly done damage to the royal brand. So how much does the royal family cost? And are they worth it? The answer comes down to whether or not you think the royals cost more than they give back. This is an imprecise science, so bear with me. It might surprise you that on top of all their wealth, the royal family receives an income from the UK government. Over £86 million a year, or $106 million. And if you are a senior member of the royal family, you get to live in places like this. Buckingham Palace has 775 rooms, and the balcony up there is where you may have seen the royal family gathering for special occasions, live weddings, birthdays, and jubilee celebrations. It's not for sale, but the palace is believed to be worth as much as four billion pounds. But here's the thing, Charles couldn't sell it, even if he wanted to. Like most royal properties, it is independently managed, meaning that while it may belong to the reigning king or queen, any money it generates through tourism goes to the state. The monarch's largest portfolio of land and property is called the Crown Estate, and it includes all of this, London's iconic Regent Street. Also, the entire seabed around the UK, as far as 12 nautical miles from land. That means these valuable wind farms too. The estate even owns shopping malls up and down the country that are home to brands like McDonald's and Victoria's Secret. In 2021, the Crown Estate businesses made a profit of £312.7 million. And again, all of this is paid to the government, not to the royals. This arrangement dates back to 1760, when King George III struck a deal with Parliament in which he would give up the earnings from his estates in return for an annual income. That payment is now known as the Sovereign Grant. That's the £86 million we mentioned before. It covers things like the cost of maintaining the palaces, paying the wages for over a thousand staff and royal travel. In 2022, when William and Kate toured the Caribbean, the flights alone cost £226,000. But the royals do have considerable private wealth too. For example, the king owns a large amount of land and property that stretches right across the country, called the Duchy of Lancaster. And William, the Prince of Wales, gets money directly from another portfolio, the Duchy of Cornwall. Both Charles and William get to keep the profits. Together they provide a private income of over £40 million a year. Charles inherited Sandringham House and Balmoral Castle in Scotland when his mother died. He is also now the owner of many of the nation's swans, part of a tradition dating back to medieval times. But here's that question again, are they worth it? Well, there are more costs beyond that annual sovereign grant. For a start, there's the undisclosed amount spent by the government on security for every event the royals attend and every parade. In all, it's estimated that the royal family could be costing the British people anywhere between 300 and 500 million pounds a year. But then if you start adding up the revenue from the Crown Estate and a string of other economic benefits linked to the monarchy, then they start to look like quite good value for money. Um, <clears throat> my name is David Haig. I'm the CEO of Brand Finance. Brand Finance have tried to put a number on the benefits that the royals bring to the UK. I wanted to check one fact here, yeah. something. There's lots of evidence that the monarchy does create this wealth. Something in the order of £800 million a year is generated every year incrementally to UK tourism because people specifically come here because they want to see royal events. It definitely stimulates air traffic, hotel usage, restaurants and all that kind of thing. 
Brand finance also account for the free advertising Britain gets around the world every time there's a big royal event, like a wedding or a new baby. They also argue that the hundreds of businesses that are endorsed by the royal household and can use a royal coat of arms reap the benefits in terms of extra sales. Oh, and don't forget the crown. And the bigger the brand, the bigger the value. Our estimation is that the monarchy generates about two billion of uplift based on all these various different slivers that we have identified. Take away the estimated £500 million in costs, and according to Brand Finance, that would mean that the UK still gains around £1.5 billion a year from its monarchy. And if you talk to Graham Smith, who runs the Republic, who's a very cheerful chap, he's always trying to knock down our economic argument. So we did speak to Graham Smith, CEO of Republic, the campaign to abolish the monarchy in Britain. For a lot of people, the monarchy was the Queen and the Queen was the monarchy. And without her on the throne, a lot of people just aren't that interested. Opinion polls show support for the monarchy as an institution has dipped considerably over the last year. It's not just the change of monarch. Smith believes recent scandals have devalued Brand Windsor. The Prince Andrew scandal has done a lot of damage. The fiasco around the exit of uh, Harry and Meghan has done a lot of damage and the accusations that have come out from that. Harry remains a prince, but since moving to California, he and Meghan have given up the income they received from the royal family, turning instead to lucrative book and TV deals. Republic argue that without a royal family, the tourists would still come, and that an elected head of state would be far more democratic. Charles wants his coronation to be less lavish than his mother's, but it is still likely to cost the government tens of millions of pounds. At a time when people are struggling to put food on the table, at a time when um, people are being denied uh, cost of living pay rises, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot of resentment and anger. Republic will be out on the streets protesting at the coronation. Not my king! Not my king! But many will be in London to celebrate, while many millions around the world will watch the ceremony on TV. But money aside, many feel that having one single family that passes on wealth and privilege to the next generation without any kind of mandate is just wrong. Others like the sense of stability the royals represent, especially at a time of political and economic instability. And it won't be easy to break with tradition. Westminster Abbey has been the setting for every royal coronation since 1066. So can the royal family survive? Most people would say the notion of a hereditary ruling family is ridiculous. The monarchy is a very resilient organisation. Despite the short-term damage by Andrew and Harry, I think it will sail through. Because people are inherently conservative and inherently they don't want to change anything. Anymore.